Terrific tip number one, we all use git add to stage files before committing, but sometimes you want to stage only part of a file. Well, you can use the dash p or the dash dash patch flag with git add to add only part of the file to the staging area. I know that I have two different sets of changes in my readme file right now. If I want to add those to two separate commits, I can do git add dash p for my readme, and it will group the changed lines together and show me each group one by one. So you can see here's a couple of changes, and then I can choose whether I want to stage this hunk. And yes, no, and there are a couple of other options here. So if I say no and hit enter, it's now going to show me the next chunk, which is this next group of lines. And I might say yes in this case. And those are all the changes. But now if I run git status, notice changes to be committed includes the readme file changes not staged for commit also includes the readme file. Parts of the readme file are ready for committing and parts are not. Now our terrific git tip number two is similar, but a little bit of a different take on it. Instead of doing git add dash p, we're going to do git add dash e for edit. And we could pass readme or a specific file set here. If we don't pass any files, it's going to use all of the changes. And what is it going to use them for? Well, it's going to open an editor view. It's going to open whatever your default editor is again. And what we're seeing here is the diff of these changes. So we can see green for any new added lines, and then we can see red for any removed lines. Now what we can do, of course, here is edit this kind of temporary file to decide which changes we actually want to stage. So for new lines like this, if I decide I don't want them to be staged right away, I just delete them. Now if we come down here to this example of these removed lines, if I don't want this particular part of the diff to be staged, all I need to do is remove the minus sign at the beginning of the line, or more accurately, replace it with a space. And that means the removal of these lines will not be staged yet. So with those two changes in place, I can go ahead, save and close this. And now if I run git status, you can see that both readme and my aliases file have some changes that are staged for commit and some that are not staged for commit. And if we do git diff to see which things were not staged for commit, it's the two sections that we decided not to commit. All right, this brings us to terrific tip number three. And that is when you're making a commit, we're all familiar with doing git commit, right? And you can do dash M and add your commit message there, or you can just do git commit and open this up in your editor. This is nice because we do have our git status output here. So we can see which files are going to be as part of this commit, which changes are not going to be part of this commit. What would make this even better is if we could see the content that is going to be part of this commit. So I'm going to quit that. And of course, you can see aborting commit due to empty commit message. That's good. So we haven't made our commit yet. Now we're going to open that view again, but this time I'm going to do commit dash V. And when we do dash V, what we can see is not only do we have the git status output here, we also can see exactly what the content of this commit will be. So I can see some changes to my readme, and I can see some line breaks that I've removed to clean up my alias file. And so now I have context for the commit message I need to write. I don't know, we'll just call this housekeeping. And I can save and close that, and now we've made that commit. So dash V is an excellent way to see those changes as you're writing the commit message. Okay, let's move on to commit tip number four. Let's say that we forgot to add a line to the commit that we just made. If we do git diff, we can see that we have some content in our readme that we kind of wanted to add to this commit, but we forgot to. That's fine. Here's what we can do. Git add readme. So we add it to the staging area, right? It's ready to be committed. Now we can do git commit. That would be the obvious next step. However, instead of going ahead and making this its own commit, dash dash amend is the way that we can add this to the last commit, or we can amend it to the last commit. Now, a couple of things here. If I just do git commit dash dash amend, this will of course be opened up in our editor. And now we can see that all of readme is ready to be committed. We're not committing all of the aliases file, but there's nothing left uncommitted in the readme file. I'm going to delete the commit message and then save and close this, and that should abort. And as we can see, we still have the readme changes staged. I did that because I want to show you we can use our tip number three with tip number four, dash dash amend dash V. And now we can see what this new commit would be. So we can see here are the new changes that we were amending this commit with. If we scroll down further, here are the changes that were in the original commit. We are not going to make this commit just yet. So I'll delete that commit message, save and close this. The last amend tip that we're going to look at, these are kind of some sub tips here, is git commit dash dash amend dash dash no edit. No edit means I don't want to change the commit message, just go ahead and add this 
to that other commit. No need to open the editor. We do that, and now we've added those changes to that commit. The housekeeping commit now has all of the readme changes. And if we do a git show to take a look at the latest commit, you can see both chunks of the readme change and then the line break cleanups are all there. Tip number five is all about interactive rebase. So this is kind of like just a tip of the iceberg tip if you will, and you guys can go deeper on this one. But interactive rebase is a bunch of tools you can use to manage a commit history. So I'm gonna do my git log command here, and we're gonna grab a hash from maybe 10 commits back. And then we're gonna do git rebase dash i, and we're gonna paste in that hash. This is the interactive rebase window. Now, again, it's opening in your editor, which is nice. Notice we have a list of commands here and we can read through these if we want to. Let me point out a couple of highlights. First of all, we can actually reorder these commits. So maybe if I want to fix this LVIM config, move that up here, I've just reordered the commit. If I save and close this file, that commit history will be rearranged. We could also squash two commits. So if I say relative numbers here should actually be part of this stuff, commit? Well, I can say squash. And if you're not sure exactly what squash does, look down here, squash commit hash means use this commit, but meld it into the previous commit. So this squashed commit will now be part of this commit up here. The other interesting thing we can do is edit. And edit is a great way to split a commit in two. If you ever have a commit that's maybe too big and you want to split it into two different commits, this is how you can do that. So I'm going to choose the last commit that we just made, our housekeeping commit, and I'm going to change pick to edit. And let's go ahead, save and close this file. Now, when we save and close this file, we are now in the middle of a rebasing. We are at a place where we've stopped at this particular commit. You can amend now with this command. And once you're satisfied with the changes, we can run git rebase continue to continue that process. So we're kind of paused at this point in our history. If I run git status, there are no uncommitted files. But the last commit, if I do git show, you can see the last commit on our history is that commit that we've just made. So we wanna split this into two different commits. So now we're gonna use a couple of normal gate commands. These are not special for our like rebase or interactive rebase edit flow. These are just some normal gate commands. We're gonna do uh, git reset head caret. And what this means is we're gonna take what's currently head or the latest commit, the one we just made, we're gonna reset it. So essentially we're gonna uncommit those changes or re-add them to the staging area. So if we do that, we can see that we have some unstaged changes after reset in the readme file and the alias file. So I'm gonna add my aliases file here and now git commit dash M, we're gonna make a commit here. We're still in the middle of this rebase flow, but we've made this commit. And now we're gonna add the other stuff and we'll say git commit um, update readme. This is not gonna look as impressive because we just use this on the very last commit in our history, but you could do this for commits that are further back in the history as well. So once we're done, we can use git rebase continue. And now we've successfully rebased and updated and we're back to our main branch. And now if I run my git log command, you can see that we actually have two separate commits here. There's a lot more you can do with interactive rebase, so definitely check that out. But these are five git tips that I hope you have found terrific. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.